So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to add quests to your Minecraft server. Now for this tutorial, we will be using Beauty Quests. Now Beauty Quests is a plugin that actually needs Citizens 2 to work. So if you haven't purchased and installed Citizens 2 on your Minecraft server yet, make sure to do that first. If you have no clue what Citizens 2 even is, a link will be in the top right corner of the screen right now. I've actually made a video on Citizens 2 a little while ago. Anyways, before we start, it would really mean a ton if you could leave a like on this video. Also check if you are subscribed to the channel. My analytics shows me that most people who watch my videos are actually not subscribed Even though it just takes a single click Two clicks if you also want to enable notifications And with those two clicks you would help me out for a lifetime We're trying to hit the 10k subscribers here on the Castasora channel And with every single click you will get me even closer to hitting that amazing milestone So make sure to click that subscribe button I will be thankful forever And then without any further ado Let's uh, dive right into this What we're gonna do is type slash quests create just like that and you will go to the quest creation GUI from here you can basically create the entire quest so the first thing we're gonna do is add a step so what should you do in the quest and these are all the different options you will have so for example Find a region, find an NPC, bring back item, kill mobs, break blocks, place blocks, write in chat, then we got interact with block, catch fishes, craft item, fill buckets, go to location, play time, breed animals, and last but not least, tame animals. Now let's go and just grab one of the easiest ones, kill mobs. In this list, we can add mobs that we want the player to kill. So I'm just gonna click here on the first square, there we go and then I'm gonna click on this first icon over here select entity type and now we can select whatever mob we want so here we got an extra ladle here we got a bat here we got a bee here we got a blaze we even got the ender dragon here so if you want to make a quest where a player needs to kill an ender dragon then that's completely possible now let's just do a cow if we hover over it you will see cow amount one entity type cow to edit the amount left click shift and left click to edit the mob name and right click to delete so let's left click and let's change the amount to five just in chat type the number you want so just five no slash nothing like that just five enter there we go now if we want to add another mob we can totally do that so just click here again then click on select entity type and then we're gonna add i want to add a sheep but i don't see a sheep on this page so by clicking on this arrow you will go to the next page there we go and then just locate the sheep then uh, click again and i want three sheep now once again if i want to delete one of these mobs i can just right click and there we go so five cows beautiful let's click on validate here the diamond on the right we have added a step now over here you can edit an end reward you can edit a description you can edit the start message i found in practice by creating quests myself you don't really need to change a lot here because editing end rewards sounds like this is your reward you get when you complete the quest that's not true this is only the reward you get when you finish this stage so you can actually add multiple stages to a quest so for example i can create a new stage break block and then i can click here to add a block uh, the block is now stone i can just set it to uh, obsidian let's set the amount to two so now we will have to break to obsidian validate beautiful validate again and now we will have a second step now if you edit this end reward over here you will actually receive this reward after completing this first stage if you want an overall end reward so an end reward after you actually cleared the quest i will show you how to do that later then edit description you can do that i'm just gonna set one of the descriptions so you will see the difference between actually setting a description and not setting a description i would actually recommend not setting one uh kill five cows there we go this one hasn't set the description you will see the difference in a second now you can also set a starting message and you can also validate requirements i actually wouldn't touch this too much because most of this stuff you can change later on so if you're happy with the steps you've created with the stages you've created we can just click on validate and we will go to the last quest details so you will actually be able to put in most important information here first of all the name of the quest i'm just gonna call it test quest 
because why not then description so you will actually have a gui where you can see all the different quests in if you want you can set a description that will show below that quest inside of gui so kill five cows and mine two obsidian there we go oh wait yeah of course we need to add it this is something you just need to notice. I don't know why they did this. But if you actually want to add a line, you will have to type add in front of it. So add and then whatever you actually wanted to say. Press enter and then it will work. And then you can type close without slashes and then it will close again. And now you can see it has added the value kill five cows and mine two obsidian. Then edit quest material. So inside of the quest menu, what kind of items should represent this quest? I'm just going to set it to obsidian to make it more clear. There we go. After that, we have some flags. So first of all, don't count quest limit. If enabled, the quest will be startable even if a player has reached its maximum amount of started quests. So you can set a maximum amount of quests that the player can start. If this is some kind of essential quest that you want everybody to have, regardless of how many quests they have already opened, then you can just check this. Next will be hide when requirements not met. So you can set requirements. We will do that in a second. So basically, things you will have to do before you can start this quest. If you enable this and you don't meet the requirements, then this quest will just disappear. Next, startable from GUI. There is a quest GUI. That's why we set this description. That's also why we set this item. That's all how this quest will be represented inside of the quest menu. Now, do you want people to also be able to start this quest from that menu? If you want that, enable it. Otherwise, leave it disabled. Next, fill on death. Pretty straightforward. If the player dies, should the quest be cancelled? Then cancelable by player. Do you want the player to be able to cancel the quest himself? Now by default it is untrue. If this is some kind of main quest, you might want to turn it to false. But otherwise I won't see a problem by just leaving this untrue. Now next we have the cancel actions. So actions performed when the player cancels the quest. It says zero rewards, which is a little bit misleading because you will probably punish the player. So let's say you don't want people to cancel quests you can make it so that they will actually lose money when they cancel a quest so you can click on cancel actions then you can add an object so just click on add object and then you can for example do edit money reward it says reward it's not gonna be a reward because we're just gonna type minus two so now you will lose two money when you cancel this quest next is enable scoreboard if this is enabled when you actually accept a quest you will see a scoreboard on the right of your screen that displays what you need to do for your quest if you don't want that for some reason disable it i would keep it enabled it's very very handy next hide menu and dine map if this is enabled the quest will not appear in dine map or in the quest menu then start automatically on first join so when a player first joins your server your world should they automatically get this quest and then toggle repeatable can this quest be done several times if you want to make it a daily quest for example you can set this to true so you can just enable it and then you can set a restart timer so how long before a player can start this quest again you can for example set it to one day and then this will be a daily quest if you leave this off though then the quest can only be done a single time what should the player do or have before they can actually start this quest edit requirements let's click on it and add an object now the thing that most people would want i think at least is this one quest required meaning that players will need to complete a quest to be able to do another quest well this is the first quest we create on this server so i can't do this right now but if this will be the second quest i made i could make it so that you will actually need to complete the first quest to be able to do this second quest you can also have experience levels for example you will need 30 experience levels before you can actually start this quest you can also have permissions required so you can set specific permissions that people need otherwise they can do the quest so that can be very handy if for example you have a vip group on your server and you want quests that only VIP players can do and normal players can't do, then you can do permission required and you can actually make it so that 
only VIP players will be able to accept this quest. Then we got score required, region required and money required. Now I don't really see in what cases these could be useful. Money can be useful. Something like 5. Bam. Now you will need 5 money on your account. Otherwise you can't accept this quest. Okay next. Start reward. If you start the quest. What kind of action will it perform? Next edit start message. I would just leave this default. I don't see any reason why you would want to change this. Next will actually be a very important one. Select NPC starter. So you can create an NPC. Which is of course done with citizens. That's why you need citizens for this plugin to actually work. And then you can click on that NPC. And that will start the quest. You can even have the NPC have dialogue. You can make it so that the player needs to come back to this NPC. To be able to finish the quest. So it really makes it feel like an RPG. Which is pretty cool. So let's click on select NPC starter. And then we can do none. Select existing NPC or create a new NPC. So we're just going to create a new one. And we're going to give the name. We're going to call it Will. There we go. We can give it a skin. So edit NPC skin value. We can just put a Minecraft username here. I'm also just going to put Will here. So this is Will skin with Will's name. This is just Will. Beautiful. I will click on validate. And there we go. Now you can edit the start dialog here. So I can just click here. To add dialog you will first need to type NPC. Which is actually dialog that the NPC will say. And then we will just type can you help me out? Question mark. Then we can do player. And. And type of course. So this is now something that the player will say. And this is something that the NPC will say. Thank you. And now we have added three lines of dialogue. Now ending firework quest pull. Not that interesting. This is interesting though. This is the actual end reward. So after you've completed the full quest. Not a single step. But the full quest. What will you get? So there are many different types of rewards you can actually add. For example execute command. So you can make it so that the player will execute a command when they finish this quest. I mean pretty much everything is possible when you can let beauty quests just execute commands. So that's very cool. Um, edit reward item so you can give the player an item. Also very important is this one. Edit money rewards. If you want players to receive a specific amount of money after actually completing the quest then you can do that. Also edit teleport location. So after you've completed the quest you can actually let players teleport to a location. That's really cool. So you can make a special room that's completely impossible to enter. But as soon as you complete the quest, you will actually teleport inside of that room. And there will be something cool, for example. Just a random thought. In my case, I'm boring. I'm just going to do a money reward. Let's add it to 50. There we go. You will now get 50 when clearing this quest. Validate. And then you can also edit the end message. I don't see why you want to do that. But you can if you want. After doing all that stuff, we can finally create our quest. So by clicking on the gold ingot here, we will actually create our quest. Let's click and there we go. Congratulations, you have created the quest test quest, which includes one branch. And we have Will here, which is cool. All right, so after creating a quest and after creating Will here, we can now right click Will and we will get a message that we don't have enough money. You must have $5. Now the reason for that is of course that we set a requirement. So we will need $5 on our account and otherwise we can't accept this quest. So to fix this problem, we're just gonna do slash eco give Kasasora and then five. There we go. Five dollars added to Casasaurus account. Your new balance is now five. And you can already see there are now particles above Will's head. And the reason for that is that we can now accept this quest. So let's right click. Can you help me out? Of course. Thank you. So much information you get from that. Okay, there we go. We have actually started our quest. And this is what you will see. So first it will of course give you the dialogue. Will is saying this. Casasaurus is saying that. Will is saying this. And after that you have started the quest test quest which is the name of the quest now the next line will be what you need to do for the quest in this case you must kill cow times five now here on the right of the screen you see the scoreboard so you will see the quest name which is test quest and after that you will see a description of what you need to do in this case kill five cows now this line over here the kill five cows is actually something we set manually so remember that we actually set a description for the first step but not for the second step that's what this is so this over here is what it looks like if you have a description now the reason i would actually not recommend doing this is because this is no count so if we don't set the description, this number over here will actually count down. If you set a description manually here, it won't be interactive, it will just be 
plain text. Now let me spawn in some cows and let's go on a killing spree. One, two, three, four, five, and then let's kill. And there we go. We have completed the first step of the quest. And over here you can now see we are on step two out of two, mine obsidian times two. So let's get ourselves some obsidian, put it here. Let's go to survival and let's mine the obsidian. So you can see that it counted down. Now it will say mine obsidian times one instead of times two. Now, if we would have set a description here, so if we would have set a description that says mine to obsidian, then of course that won't count down because it is just plain text that we put there. But because we didn't set a description, it will now just say mine obsidian times one because we've already mined one and now I'm gonna mine the second one just like that. And there we go. Congratulations, you have finished the quest, test quests. You obtain $50. How great is that? And if we now talk to Will again, you can see that nothing will happen. And the reason for that is that we made this a one-time quest. So if you want to edit this quest again, you will first need to know the ID of the quest. To know which ID your quest is, you can type slash quests list. By doing that, you will see the name of the quest and beneath that, the ID. So in this case, test quests has the ID one. That's good to know. So now we can type quest, edit, and then one. And there we go. We're now inside of the editing menu. So here we can add another step. For example, we can do find NPC, select NPC. We're going to select Will. And we're going to edit the dialogue and we're going to make the dialogue NPC smiley face. There we go. That's all I want. <laughs> so now we have a third step added. Let's click on validate. Let's click on edit quest. And now the quest has been edited. Now because we fundamentally changed the quest, we will be able to do the quest again. Again. So I can now right click on wheel again and I will be able to actually start it again. This is because we added a whole new step to the quest. So beware of that. If you add a step or if you fundamentally change something from the quest, then all the data of that quest will be reset. So players will be able to do the quest again and of course also get the reward again. There goes number five. Test quest has been updated. Then once again, we're going to mine to obsidian. So that will be one. And there goes two. Beautiful. And now the extra step will be talk with NPC Will. So let's go to NPC Will. You can see lots of particles above his head. Let's talk with him. Smiley face and bam. $50. Now before I wrap up this video, let's take a look at the config. So the config of this plugin is actually not that interesting. There might be a few things you want to change, but in general, most of the settings are just fine by default. So you have check for updates, enable prefix. If you want to store all your data on a MySQL server, then you can do that. If you don't want people to actually have a scoreboard, you can disable that. So that's good to know. This can also be a pretty cool feature if you want to. So you have the mop process bar, show a process bar, so a boss bar on the top of your screen. Basically the same boss bar you have if you fight the ender dragon. So should it show a boss bar when a player has to kill some mobs for a quest? So let's say a player has to kill five cows, then beauty quest can show the progress on the boss bar. So that's pretty cool. Oh jeez, I already skipped over it. This is probably the most important thing that people might want to change. So how many quests should players be allowed to have open at the same time? Right now, it is at zero. Zero means infinite. So right now players can literally accept every single quest on the whole server at the same time. If you set this to five, for example, then people will be able to open five quests at the same time. And if you want to accept quest number six, you will first have to complete one of these five quests or cancel one of them. Now for the rest, nothing here is really that interesting. I mean, they're all minor changes, but like I said, most of the settings are just fine by default. But if there's something specific you want to change, then it might be a wrong idea to take a look at the config file, see if there's a possibility to change it there. And then guys, that's gonna be it for now. That's how you add quests to your Minecraft server. I really, really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, not subscribed yet, and you did enjoy the content, make sure to smash that subscribe button and click on the notification bell. You would really help me out by doing that. You actually would. We're trying to hit the 10k subscribers here on the Casa Server channel. So by hitting that subscribe button, you will get me even closer to hitting that amazing milestone. And then I hope you have a fantastic day as I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.